Hi folks, welcome to the Lightroom Blog channel. I'm Sean McCormick and in this video we're going to talk about previews in Lightroom. Well, what is a preview? Lightroom doesn't view the original file in most of the modules except develop. So when you're looking at any image, you're actually looking at a preview which is generated from the original file with Lightroom settings combined. It's a smaller file that loads faster. In fact, it's actually a preview pyramid. You can have up to seven different preview sizes loaded inside one file, and we'll actually look at the anatomy of that file shortly. But first, we're going to talk about the process of creating previews. We first come across previews in the import module, where we have an option in file handling to create different sizes from minimal, which is just a thumbnail, embedded in sidecar, which uses whatever the embedded JPEG is in your raw file, for example. It doesn't use it for very long, though. It will always try and create a preview, a standard preview or a one-to-one -one at any stage, or as soon as it thinks it needs it. Standard is the one I would generally recommend people uh, build initially, because that's the one that's the same size as your screen. And then one-to-one -one previews is literally a full-size preview. You don't always need these. You only need them if you're zooming into one-to-one -to, -one to check something on a file. So I'm just going to cancel out of there. So if we zoom into a file like this, what we see is we see this loading. So that means that it's looking for the preview file and then it's loading it. So we saw that loaded pretty quickly. That was because there was a one-to-one -one generated for that. But let's say I pick this file here, which I'm fairly sure I haven't. Yep, see the way it's very pixelated? That means that it only had a very, very small file. So now it's moving in to the next size file and it's generating the file and then it'll become sharp once the actual file, the one-to-one -one file has been generated for the preview. That, of course, depends on whether or not the original file is actually in focus, which it may or may not be. So as you can see, because this is a 24 megapixel RAF file, it's a bit slow to process. And the reason for that is the the mosaic in, in raw files from Fuji are very different to the normal Bayer pattern, so they do take much longer to actually process. Now, you can change the size of the previews that you're seeing, and you can control the previews that you're seeing from your catalog settings, which is located in the Lightroom menu. It's in the edit menu if you're on a PC. So you go to file handling, you get these options here. You can see the total size of the preview, which is it's currently calculating, but we know on disk it's about 140 uh, gigabytes in mind. We'll see that in a second. You have a choice of your standard preview size. Now, originally you would have had to pick one of these sizes, but I think it was with Lightroom 5 that you got the option to have an auto. So this way it just detects what the screen size is and just creates that size, which is perfect. You have some preview quality settings. You have low, medium, and high. High will give you much, much better quality with a bigger file size, but you won't see banding and graduation in skies or where light is fading between two different colors. High will get rid of that, but medium, medium is a good compromise between good quality what you see on screen and storage space. And speaking of storage space, you can automatically discard one-to-one -one previews after a certain period, be it one day, one week, 30 days, or never. You can choose to keep them if you don't mind the space they take up. It doesn't matter if you've discarded them and you go back to them after that time because Lightroom will just generate a new one as it needs. All it takes is that time that we've seen there for it to actually load. It is not critical. <laughs> In fact, you could delete your entire previews folder, which we're going to look at shortly. And Lightroom will just create it again as it needs. So speaking of that, let's actually go and look at that folder. Now on a Mac, there's a really convenient trick to find where your folder is. If you hold down the command key and go to Lightroom catalog, you'll see the name of the folder that it's in. And it'll open it up in Finder. And I'm just going to click it into this mode here. Let me do that. So now we see we have a previews folder, which has the same name as the catalog with like space previews after it. This is essential. That's how Lightroom knows it's got the correct previews folder. So if you were to rename the catalog file, you should rename the previews folder to match. So that way Lightroom knows where they are. So I'm going to actually look inside it. Now on the Mac, this happens to be a package file. So it looks like one file. On the PC, it's actually a folder. So I'm going to right click on it. And that will give me the option to show package contents. And so this is what's inside it. So I'm just going to switch to this view here. 
I'm going to select a preview here. And that's a preview. So we'll see a little thumbnail of what's inside it. We can see that it's 1.9 megabytes. So that makes me believe that there's going to be a fair bit in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to open with a text editor. You're saying, but it's, it's previews are pictures. Well, they are and they aren't. There is some text in, in this case, so I'm going to open it. And so here's what's actually inside the file. I'm going to pull this down a little bit so we get a little bit more of an idea. So we can see here that the original file is 20 or sorry, 4896 by 3264. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven files within that. And we can see that it stretches from the full size file the whole way down. So full, half, quarter, one eighth, so forth down. Lightroom will pick the one that it needs as it needs it, basically from this. So what do they look like? Well, I'm going to use a trial version of a program called File Juicer to find out. So it's found File Juicer, so I'm just going to click Open. This is an application that will find JPEG files inside other files. So it's now opened up this folder with some information in it. So I just hit the space bar to open up Quick View. You can see we have a tiny thumbnail. We have the full size file, half size, quarter size, and so on and so forth. So those are the actual JPEGs that are stored within the file itself. So that is the anatomy of the preview. So I have to mention the previews menu item. So from here, you can choose to build, one-to-one -one or standard size, and discard. You can also build smart previews or discard smart previews from this menu as well. And we will talk about smart previews in another video. The final thing about previews is that they are something that you can get back. Let's say you had a situation where you had a drive crash really badly, and you can't recover your raw files, but you had done some work on the files, so you have generated previews for them. There is a script you can get that will help fix that and that is on the Adobe website here. Um, I'll actually put the link into the description. And you can get a script for uh, basically that will extract the previews from the previews folder. And so all the information here is on the page about how, how to put them in. Uh, but basically there's, the quick, there's a slightly quicker way than that, and that is there is an open script uh, option. Go to open user scripts folder if you've already got a script in before. I, I have this LRE launch thing, which is really, really cool for restarting Lightroom. But I have this extract previews here. So you go extract previews, and I've only one image selected, so I've actually created this folder already. So I just click choose. And it will then extract that folder, or extract the previews, the largest preview, which you can see it's just done there. It's 5.7 megabytes, it's full size. Now we can see there's no rotation information in it and the color is different because there's no, uh, it doesn't attach a color profile to it. Lightroom will assume that it's an sRGB file. To my knowledge, they are actually Adobe RGB files. So you will need to change them to be or Adobe RGB files or they will not be displayed correctly in any programs. But that is just to show you that you can get back preview files. If I selected a couple of images here, say in the grid, Now it will just overwrite whatever's in the folder as well. It's not going to ask for stuff that's there. So as we, oh, it's, it's actually, it hasn't overwritten it. I stand corrected. So we can see the other images here that we've created larger ones, but here's one that we only have a smaller size file of. So just to let you know that it depends on what you've already got created. Just for the sake of testing, I've actually opened this preview into Photoshop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click edit assign profile so i'm just going to tell it this is the profile to use click ok and we can see that the colors become much more saturated and the skin tones far better so that does confirm that this is an adobe rgb file so that you will need to assign these profiles to them or lightroom will give them very muted tones compared to their actual color that's been a look at previews in lightroom hopefully it's given you some understanding of how lightroom works and a little bit of a hint of what happens inside the anatomy of previews themselves Thank you for watching. Again, if you like it, please do hit the thumbs up. 
Uh, if you don't like it, you'd be more than welcome to hit the thumbs down. Subscribe if you haven't already, and do hit the notification bell if you want to get notified of stuff. Obviously, there's plenty more in the pipeline, and my notebook should be about here somewhere. Here we go. Notebook about here. And we can have a quick peek at the long, long, long list of <laughs> video ideas that are there. So, yep. Loads and loads of stuff in there. So, again, thanks for watching, and subscribe, please. Thanks. Bye.